Good evening, brethren. Welcome to our Wednesday night prayer and praise meeting. We thank the Lord for taking us through the first half of the week. And frankly, it has been an eventful week. Lots of things have happened. And we praise the Lord that he has preserved us once more to worship him. So everyone say a big amen. amen. We praise the Lord for all that he has done for us. So then, we welcome all those who are in the chapel, outside of the chapel, that is maybe at home, watching the live stream or the Zoom, and a field. We welcome everyone for whatever medium that the Lord has provided for you to watch. So let us kneel for a word of prayer, then we will sing or song, have our song of praise. I sing the mighty power of God. Our Father and our God, we come before thee to praise thy most holy name. We thank you so much for preserving us that we may worship thee as a corporate people. Be pleased, Lord, come feeling near. May thy Holy Spirit work mightily on us that we will learn of thee, that we may learn more to praise thee. Thou hast proved thyself to us. Help us not to be ungrateful. Help us to do everything in our power to cooperate with thee. And we ask thy blessing on the speaker that he will give us words of grace, information to help us to walk even closer with thee. Remember thy people of field, Brother Francis, as he returns home. We pray he has arrived or very close to arriving at home. And we thank you so much for hearing and answering our prayer. In our Savior's name we do beseech thee. Amen. I sing the mighty power of God that makes the mountains rise. you're doing a hundred yard dive but we thank the Lord for them anyway and the music but now we'll stand and sing O Shepherd Divine hopefully this one is at a little slower pace Thank you. 
And at this time, we are going to ask Brother Courtney to come forward for the evening's presentation. And it's good to be back. And everybody on the road and the field sends their greetings. It was a, it was a wonderful trip. Uh, we met a lot of new people and hopefully some of them you'll all meet soon. But the trip was a, the trip was a blessing and Brother Davin was a good sidekick. <laughs> a lot of talking. <laughs> we had a lot of conversation. So it was good. Okay. It's Wednesday night and... Uh, I know a lot of us, we're tired, and I'll just wait for the brothers in the sound room to bring up the study. All right. So the topic of our discussion this evening would be hell at enlarged. And that is taken from the book of Isaiah, the fifth chapter, and verse 14 and since brother Dodd has did the prayer we won't need to say a prayer again but just quickly to bring up the chart and to bring out the point we all know that this particular woman Babylon sits on the heads first and this is 1929 right here when the message came. And this is a sealing angel. And this is Ezekiel 9. And sometime after Ezekiel 9 is fulfilled, the churches federate and Babylon sits on the heads. And they come to some agreement that they need to have a false prophet influencing the state. So this is a church and the state working together and they pass a national Sunday law nationally. And after a while, the woman rides the beast or takes control of the entire planet Earth. And so the United States was the catalyst and I say was because this is the future of this. So once this is done, day system takes control of the world. We know eventually that the horns, and this is just going over some points that we should already know for where we're going, the horns will hate this woman and destroy her and burn her with fire. Now, this is what Inspiration has to say in Shepherd Art, Volume 2, page 123. Therefore, when Catholicism, Protestantism, and Spiritualism class each other's hand by the medium of a league, then it could be said that the woman sitteth on the heads. So we see who the woman will be symbolical of, an entity of three forces coming together. And it continues, the symbol of the woman sitting on the beast will meet its fulfillment when that religious or that same set of entities that was called in the previous paragraph, that religious federation shall make an alliance with the powers of the world. Such an act would give the woman full control of the entire beast, horns, and heads. But as we said before, that this woman will be destroyed and Inspiration continues. The world at that time, as represented by the horns of the beast, shall hate the harlot, dethrone her, and burn her with fire, which can be nothing less than by revolution against the head of that religious political system. Then the prophecy of Revelation 16, verse 19, will meet its fulfillment. That great city, Babylon, was divided into three parts. So the burning of her inspiration is telling us what it means. That is the union of Protestant, Protestantism, Catholicism, and spiritualism 
was dissolved. So the destruction of it means that they each in their own individual, as individual entities. So the Catholic system will be destroyed by Christ's second coming. It is Christ's second coming which will burn her up. Spiritualism goes their own way and Protestantism goes their own way. The Protestants though, the false prophet and the beast, they are burnt in hellfire and this becomes a type of hellfire to be kindled over here. So this is the type, this is the antitype. So in the type, they are only the beast and the false prophet which is cast in. When Christ comes the second time, his brightness destroys all the sinners. So this fire is put out because there is no wicked alive except for the devil and his angels. And they will have 1,000 years confined to this planet earth. Now, we will be looking at some things that will be transpiring right here. From right here, essentially, to right here. Now, the Bible says the following. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. So now, in the devil being bounded, if you, this was New York or some other city, it would just mean that there's nothing. Everything is destroyed. There's no life. The place is barren. And Sister White, in the book Great Controversy, stated the following. The revelator foretells the banishment of Satan and the condition of chaos and desolation to which the earth is to be reduced. And he declares that this condition will exist for a thousand years. After presenting the scenes of the Lord's second coming and the destruction of the wicked, the prophecy continues. I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that whole serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till... The thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. Sister White continues in the same book, and she says, The expression, bottomless pit, represents the earth in a state of confusion and darkness. It's evident from, the, uh, from other scriptures concerning the condition of the earth in the beginning. So just in Genesis, we hear, in the beginning, God said, let there be light. Or the earth was void and without form. And darkness was upon the deep. And he said, the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light. So here, inspiration is telling us, when Christ comes, its brightness is so powerful, it brings the earth back to that pre-life state. So God is life. And where he is not is death and darkness. So here inspiration tells us that the earth goes back to that condition. And after the thousand years, the devil comes up back for a little season. And it states here, And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Now, if I could use a depiction, these are people behind me. This is still not a good depiction of what will occur then. And the best John could do when he saw the view, he said, they are as sand of the sea for multitude. Now, all of us in this room who have life, we will be in the city or out in the crowd. There is no middle ground. Now, Isaiah the prophet had stated the following in Isaiah 14, verse 12 to 16. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? 
How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. Verse 16. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee, and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? So for most people outside, this was the first time, or is, they would have been looking at devil. The devil, personally, face to face, and Isaiah say in verse 16, They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee, and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? By this time, the beast and the false prophet that were already in hell, hell itself, inspiration states in Isaiah 5 and verse 14, hell had enlarged herself to accommodate this great multitude. And opened her mouth without measure, and their glory, and their multitude, and their pomp, and he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. So, the two entities that found themselves in it, in the type, the beast and the false prophet, after the thousand years, inspiration tells us now that El enlarges our border to accommodate these people that are like the sand of the sea. So this is now a massive expansion of the condition of hell. Now in Timely Greetings, volume 1, number 2, and page 22, inspiration states the following. As there is but one right way and but one door, and as all Christians do not see alike and do not walk together, could it be that we are all wrong? all going in a wrong direction? No. That could never be as long as the Lord does not forsake the earth. Indeed, not. For he must have a people in whom to confide his truth and by whom to save those who choose to go his way, those who go through the door. And this is timely greetings number two. The door, the porter, and all of that stuff is contained in this study. So, those who choose to go some other way will in the end discover that the devil, not the Lord, is behind them and that hell, not the kingdom, is ahead of them. So here inspiration is telling us, one, we can choose to go our own way and we can choose to go through some other door. But he's saying, there is but one door one way so he has set up the requirements for us to be saved if we choose to go some other way he is stating and telling us clearly that we are being pushed or driven by the devil and we are not going to make it in the kingdom but we should not be surprised if we land outside now he continues now let me go to James then pick up he adulterers and adulteresses, know he not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. So, if you want to be a friend of the world, we are then an enemy of God. No, Luke states the following. And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when ye fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitation. And the concept can be said, go and become friends with the people of the world. So if you find yourself in hell, they will say, this is my good old friend. We used to drink and party together. But if you go to church, study, 
have led people to the truth or profess religious righteousness and find yourself in hell, then you're going to have some problems. You are going to have some problems. They will say, what are you doing outside here amongst us? So Christ is saying, what we should do is this. Make friends with the people in the world. So if you lose your way, they can welcome you with open arms. Listen, inspiration continues. Timely Greetings, Volume 1, number 21, page 21. Most Christians know that there are two classes in the church, wheat and tears. But few, if any, seem to care. We, as reformers, though, especially since we have been given this great light on the subject, cannot afford to be indifferent. We may now intelligently choose to be wheat or choose to be tears. If after knowing this truth, some choose to be tears, they, of course, will have gained nothing and need not be surprised when they land in hell. If after knowing this truth, some choose to become be tears, they of course will have gained nothing, and they need not be surprised when they land in hell. There should be no surprise. No. In the book Patriarchs and Prophets, Sister White highlights a potent point that transpired in Sodom and Gomorrah. Patriarchs and Prophet, page 158, paragraph 3 to 4, she reads, she quotes the point. Seeing the abuse, seeing, this is not hearing, but he saw, seeing the abuse to which strangers was, were exposed in Sodom, Lot made it one of his duties to guard them at their entrance by offering them entertainment, and these are the angels, at his own house. He was sitting at the gate as the travelers approached. And upon observing them, he rose from his place to meet them, and bowing courteously said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, or beg you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night. They seemed to decline his hospitality, saying, Nay, but we will abide in the street. Their object in this answer was twofold, to test the sincerity of Lot, and also to appear ignorant of the character of the men of Sodom as if they supposed it safe to remain in the street at night. Their answer made Lot the more determined not to leave them to the mercy of the rabble. He pressed his invitation until they yielded and accompanied him to his house. He had hoped to conceal his intention from the idlers at the gate by bringing the strangers to his home by a circuitous route. But their hesitation and delay and his persistent urging caused them to be observed. And before they had, re had retired for the night, a lawless crowd gathered about the house. It was an immense company. Youth and aged men alike inflamed by the vilest passions. The strangers had been making inquiry in regard to the character of the city, and Lot had warned them not to venture out of his door at that night when the hooting and jeers of the mob were heard, demanding that the men be brought out to them. Jesus Christ, in Matthew chapter 11, speaking of this incident, said, Then began he to upbraid the cities, wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. Woe unto thee, Chorazin! Woe unto thee, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works which are done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more terrible for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment, at the day of judgment, than for you. And thou Capernaum, which are exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which had been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained unto this day. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. He's saying, it is better you go 
in Sodom and live and experience all the wickedness that was happening in Sodom. But he's saying hell is going to be worse than Sodom. Hell is going to be worse than all the bad experiences that was happening in Sodom. At least in the days of Sodom, grace lingered. The Savior intervened. But who is there to intervene for that 100 years? Especially if we throw away the grace that is offered us. And these same people in Sodom approach and ask, what are you doing out here? And Christ says, verse 24, But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. Sister White, in Patriarchs and Prophets, page 165, paragraph 1, stated the following. The Redeemer of the world declares that there are greater, greater sins than that for which Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed. Those who hear the gospel invitation calling sinners to repentance and heed it not are more guilty before God than were the dwellers in the vale of Sidim. And still greater sin is theirs who profess to know God and keep his commandments, yet who deny Christ in their character and their daily life. In light of the Savior's warning, the fate of Sodom is a solemn admonition, not merely to those who are guilty of outbreaking sin, but to all who are trifling with heaven sent light and privileges. And so, no Davidian could ever want to be outside that place for 100 years. Sister White says, great controversy. In that vast throng, this is this wicked crowd, are multitudes of long-lived race, the long-lived race that existed before the flood. Men of lofty stature and giant intellect who yielded to the control of fallen angels, devoted all their skill and knowledge to the exaltation of themselves. Men whose wonderful works of art led the world to idolize their genius, but whose cruelty and evil inventions, defiling the earth and defacing the image of God, caused him to blot them from the face of his creation. There are kings and generals who conquered nations, valiant men who never lost a battle, proud, ambitious warriors whose approach made kingdoms tremble in debt. These experience no change, and as they come from the grave, they resume the current of their thoughts just where it ceased. They are actuated by the same desire to conquer that ruled them when they fell. The same way they went down, the same way they're coming up. The same desires, the same inclination, the same feelings, everything they come up back the same way. And inspiration states the following. Lucifer said he will ascend to the sides of the north. He could have ascended had he obeyed the commandment of the Lord. But no, Lucifer thought he knew better than his God and wished to make an improvement in heaven. Honest in his deception, he attempted the impossible task. Isaiah 14, verse 15, we read, Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the side of the pit. The result was, instead of ascending to the sides of the north, where he desired to go, he descended down the sides of the pit, in the opposite direction. Just so, many Christians now, like Lucifer, think they are going to ascend up in the sides of the north, heaven. But in their own way, wishing to improve on the wisdom of the living God. They are more interested to go to heaven than they are to study and obey the explicit instruction given them in the word of God. Though honest in their misconception of the heavenly direction, they will find themselves down in the sides of the pit Hell, the disappointment of such a one would be greater than we can realize. No, if someone honestly 
is desiring and thinking they're going to go to heaven and find themselves in hell. Here, inspiration is telling us the disappointment of such a one would be greater than we can realize. Experience only can tell the sorrow and grief at such a time. And nobody has ever had that experience. And so, inspiration is telling us over and over. And so, we will be in the city or out the city. There is no middle ground for none of us here. And as the devil was after all the patriarchs and the prophets in the old days, so we who are in the land of the living today, he is bent to carry us too with him. And we have to be determined to make it. It's not going to be easy. And so, inspiration says, Satan consult with his angels. And then with these kings and conquerors and mighty men, they look upon the strength and numbers on their side and declare that the army within the city is small in comparison with theirs and that it can be overcome. They lay their plans to take possession of the riches and glory of the new Jerusalem. All immediately begin to prepare for battle. Skillful artisans construct implements of war. Military leaders famed for their success marshal the throng of warlike men into companies and divisions. And the same way people go down, the same way they come up. Those who have a knowledge of this truth, they're coming up knowing too that that venture is bound to fail because they already know from present truth that it cannot succeed. Inspiration says, at last the order to advance is given and the countless host moves on an army such as never was as, as was never summoned by earthly conquerors such as the combined forces of all ages since war began on the earth could never equal satan the mightiest of warriors leads the van and his angels unite their forces for this final struggle kings and warriors are in his train and the multitudes follow in vast companies each under its appointed leader with military precision the serried ranks advance over the earth's broken and uneven surface to the city of God. By the command of Jesus, the gates of the new Jerusalem are closed and the armies of Satan surround the city and make ready for the onset. Brother Houtif says, and this is what inspiration has to say, there shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days. For the child shall die an hundred years old, but the sinner being an hundred years old shall be accursed. The child is out there also and will be a child for 100 years. God is life, and wherever his presence is not, once his presence is not there, there is no growth, there is no life. Everything is death, stagnation. Timely Greetings, Volume 1, Number 44, Page 9. Concerning the wicked in the earth made new, who come up in the second resurrection, the resurrection of the unjust, Revelation 20 and verse 5, there shall be neither birth nor death among them for 100 years. Thus the only children that shall be among them will be those who are raised from the dead. Consequently, both those who are old and those who are young will have lived an hundred years from the resurrection of the unjust to the second death. Thus a child and a sinner becoming a hundred years old in the earth made new shall both succumb in the end of the century. Then the righteous shall inhabit the whole earth. You know what? Parents cause their children to be out there with them. And the righteous with their children are in the, in, the, in the new Jerusalem. And inspiration continues. The reader will observe that when the Lord creates the new heavens and the new earth, then from the time that the wicked arise from their graves to the time they are destroyed forever by the second death, the little season, there shall be no more dense among them 
and the infant of days no more births nor the old man that had not filled his days no more deaths before the man's days are fulfilled for the child shall die in hundred years old and the sinner being a hundred years old shall be a curse both the old and the young that is those who remain in their graves during the millennium will after all come forth together each to live an hundred years the little season which Satan will again deceive them there will be neither death nor birth they cannot die by suicide even if they desire to kill themselves they cannot die only God can put them to death so even if they're tortured out there they can't die even if they lose all their limbs they can't die and inspiration says parents who continue to serve the devil will have their little ones with them in hell and parents who break away from the abominations will have their little ones with them in the kingdom where do you stand are you with those who have the burden of this work or are you against them this you see is the decisive hour for you for me and this is an important question for even those who have turned their guns against the association and God's truth are you with those who have a burden for this work or are you against them this you see is the decisive hour for you and brother Hotif said himself too for me and he said saying he with his choice and this is what Joshua said as for me and my house so sister white says at last the order to advance is given and the countless hosts move on and let me go sorry let me go back while satan was rallying his army early writings the saints were in the city beholding the beauty and glory of par the paradise of god jesus at their head leading them all at once the lovely savior was gone from our company but soon we heard his lovely voice saying come he blessed of my father inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world we gathered about jesus and just as he closed the gates of the city the curse was pronounced upon the wicked the gates were shut then the saints used their wings and mounted to the top of the wall of the city jesus was also with them his crown looked brilliant and glorious and you know what in going on the wall the saints must see people outside that they know all of us from where young until now have known a lot of people some of them are dead and gone they died out of the faith and we here who are in the land of the living by God's grace being on the wall will see people outside that we know that we spoke to that we lived with that we talked with that we were friends with that we played with that we grew with outside and so while we have life it is always good to put in a word of encouragement to someone to turn their feet in the path of righteousness if we could cry in the city it would be a sad and broken-hearted time to look out this is why the Lord takes away tears from our eyes especially the children that the parents cause to be lost and sister white says amid the ransom throng are the apostles of Christ the heroic Paul the ardent Peter the love and loving John and the true hearted brethren and with them the vassals of martyrs while outside the walls with every vile and abominable thing are those by whom they were persecuted in prison and slain there is Nero that monster of cruelty and vice beholding the joy and exaltation of those whom he once tortured and whom extremist anguish he found satanic delight his mother is there to witness the result of her own work to see how the evil stamp of character transmitted to her son the passions and encouraged and developed by her influence and example of born fruit in the crimes that caused the world to shudder a vast multitude of wicked outside and so the Lord eventually rains fire on the wicked and this is not even a true depiction of what will happen and this is what the wise man had said 
stolen waters are sweet and the bread eaten in secret is pleasant but he that participate in those things know it not that the dead are there and that our guests are in the depths of hell and this Lord our Savior will destroy this world and burn it up in fire and we will be one or two place we have we can't there's no middle ground inside the city or outside so our concern people are worried about Ezekiel 9 and sometimes we're caught up in Ezekiel 9 I'm about to close Christ says therefore whosoever whosoever ye have spoken whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light and that which ye have spoken in the air in closet shall be proclaimed upon the housetops and I say unto you my friends be not afraid of them which kill the body and after that they have no more power that they can do but I will forewarn you whom he shall fear fear him which after he had killed had power to cast you cast into hell yea I say unto you fear him don't fear people don't let people drag you down don't get concerned about that and sometimes we are fearful of what people think of us we're hiding from people and the Lord is saying don't fear people fear me and so in closing sister white made and let me read a statement from brother Hout if then close with sister white the old devil well knows that this last message the world will ever receive so let me go this is not the one I wanted okay will ever receive sorry and that it will chain him for a thousand years and at last reduce his being down to the ashes as though he never was therefore he is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour hence because we cannot be too cautious of his snares are too particular in following the lamb with us ever go it I am sending this warning and sister white in closing said the following let us determine that if it, if it costs everything we will have heaven and become partakers of the divine nature she's saying whatever you lose here it is irrelevant don't lose heaven God bless you all and God bless Bashan Hill okay brethren I think we had an earful again let me reiterate what he just said whatever you may lose here make sure of the kingdom make sure of heaven you do not want to be outside of that city as we have seen it's real there are too many parents who are well trained by their children and both of them will be right there outside the gate don't let it happen to any one of us please now the hour grows late and there are a couple of prayer requests first sister Lemke it appears as if brother Lemke is sadly having the first sign of dementia she is worried right now of course sister Lemke is elderly herself she cannot take care of brother John not in that condition so she's asking for our prayers a decision must be made as to where he will go and um, she's also, she does also have a burden for her family. There is a daughter by the name of Holly Martin. And um, she's asking for prayer. She's trying to come back. Frankly, daughters and um, granddaughters 
of fighting to return. Satan is not going to give up the battle that easily. He's going to fight tooth and nail. But our brethren have confidence in our prayers. So they're asking for our prayers. Please let us pray earnestly for them. Then sadly, this afternoon I learned that Kim and Rogel in Ghana have contracted malaria. Both are in the hospital at this time. Brother Rogel is worse than Sister Kim, but both are suffering. So we are asking for prayers for them. So what we will do, we are going to forego our closing hymn, and we're going to have a season of prayer. We're going to ask for three prayers, okay? And to close, and please, brethren, we do not have a long time. Do not pray up for the weak. We are asking you to pray specifically for these brethren. Okay, let's be specific. So we're going to ask for three random prayers. Do not take a long time to choose that you want to pray. And to close, we will ask Sister Betty Ann to close for us. Let us kneel. Our Father, which art in heaven, I thank you so much for allowing us to be able to make it to another Wednesday. Father, I pray and I ask for you to please help the Lemkeys. I pray that you bless them and that you help them with their health and that you show them how much you love them by taking care of them. And Father, I thank you so much for blessing them all of the years to be in the message and I pray that their days are much longer. Father, I pray and I ask for you to also help their daughter and to be with her. And I pray for you to also show her how much you love her as well. Lord, I also pray and ask for you to help for Kim and Rogel. Um, I pray for you to help for their health to increase and for them to overcome malaria. And I pray that Rogel recovers very fast and so does Kim. I pray that malaria does not defeat them and that you continue to bless and help them and for them to do their work. And Father, I pray that whatever the enemy has in store for us, that his plans never succeed. Lord, I pray that only only you can guide us. And Father, I pray that you silence every other voice except for yours. And I pray that we only hear your voice and we only see what you want from us. Lord, I pray and ask for you to please help each and every person on this hill and their families, um, the youth, most definitely all around the world. I pray and ask for you to help us and for us to show us that your way is the only way and for us to silence our ways. Do so pray. Amen. Our Father, we chat in heaven. We thank you for this privilege to be here, to be partakers of the divine plan of redemption. After listening to this presentation, we understand very clear that you are really serious with us in terms of salvation and you keep compelling us to follow the way and we thank you for your grace and mercy at this present moment father we about to conclude the service we ask you to have a special eyes of mercy upon us and especially 
upon those of us who find themselves in difficult situation at this present time. We ask you to visit at this moment Brother Rogel and Sister Kim in Ghana. As you know, they are very devoted for the cause. And right now, they are suffering. We ask you for your intervention. We strongly believe that nothing is impossible for you and nothing is impossible for those who believe. Touch them with a special touch. And we strongly believe that in Jesus' name, they are here. And also we want you to visit the Lemsky family to continue shielding them under your wings. According to your will, you can do what is necessary in their favor, and that's for your glory. We want to ask you for mercies on, on behalf of Sister Martin and the Lemsky's grandchildren also to visit them and to send your Holy Spirit to work on their hearts so that they can return back home and they can embrace you as never before. Bless each and every one of us, Father. You know our heart desires. You help us to become strong in the Word and to accomplish our task as we ask you all these favors and mercies not because we worry but in the name of that son jesus christ we pray amen our father in heaven as we linger a little longer we beseech you to please be with sister limke and brother limke who have been stalwarts in your message for many years father please grant them the grace and mercy that they need to help them to continue to live, Father, if it be thy will, and for Brother Lemke's mind to continue to be sharp and not allow dementia to defeat them, Father, so that they can continue to be an example for Sister Martin, her daughter, and their grandchildren, Father, so they can all glorify, glorify your name. We ask that you please give them the strength the mercy and the grace that is needed for them to press forward towards the mark father father please bind the devil that seeks the mastery over sister martin and her children to come back please make the path straight for them so that they can see and that they can be living examples father we ask for you to please be with rogel give him strength and vigor and sister kim so that it will be a witness to those that they are reaching that you are in control and you are the healer and life giver and nothing can nothing can escape your loving touch if it be thy will we ask all of these mercies and these blessings and continue to bless Bashan hill and the family that resides here in jesus name amen Heavenly Father, we thank thee for all these petitions that have gone up before you, and we have asked humbly. Lord, we thank you for the blessings that we have gained through obedience, and we ask thee, Lord, to be merciful to us, us in our acts of disobedience. And we pray, dear Lord, that as we close out this afternoon, this worship session, and as we separate from each other, we know, Lord, we are not separating ourselves from your presence. So we ask thee, dear God, to help us to remain conscious that we will continue to strive to do what is right. And we pray and ask all these petitions that they will happen according to your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
So now we'll depart the chapel in the prescribed order from the front. And please have a blessed night.